I'm going to make a dragon and this is the dragon I'm going to make. It won't be exactly like this one, but, um, you know, because we all know we can't replicate things because resin has a mind of its own. But um, this gorgeous little dragon that I made, um, I've been asked to make two. So I've made one and I've got to make another one. So it'll be in similar colours, but um, it won't turn out exactly the same. Or maybe it will. We'll soon find out. Let me just put that somewhere safe. So here's the mould. Um, I haven't bothered washing it since I last used it because I'm using the same colours, so it doesn't matter. I'm going to use um, a big red mica. I'm going to use a ruby mica, a claret mica, and a red gold mica. I'm going to use a brush. And then I've got some other brushes as well, which are thinner that I can also use if I need to get into any nooks and crannies. So first things first, I'm gonna start off with the smaller areas. So that will be these bits, which will be gold. So um, if we look at this finished dragon, you can see that it's the, if we imagine that the wing has got a bone and that they're the fingers and all the spikes and all this little bit here. So all these, bits here are going to be gold, all the spikes are going to be gold, um, up here the horn there and the horn there are going to be gold, um, all around there. So let's start there. I'm going to get my brush and my gold. I'm going to open it up away from the mould. I'm going to put my brush in away from the mould because mica flies everywhere. I don't want too much on my brush because it will go everywhere. And I'm just going to very gently start dabbing it in. At this point, I'm just laying a foundation. I'm not worrying about finesse. It's literally just get the gold where I want it to be without it flying absolutely everywhere else. I might need a smaller brush. Yeah, I might go for a smaller brush in a minute on those bits. So again, I'm just putting the gold in there. I'll use smaller brushes for that bit. I've not got anything on the brush. There's no liquid, no water or anything. So it's just literally just picking up the um, the mica, giving it a bit of a, a waft in there. So I'm not bringing too much out at any one time. It's better to build it up than to put a massive chunk down and then regret that. So just to give you an idea, Let's just now make these bits more permanent. So now I'm going to brush them in. I'm going to brush them all around the edges of the mould, up the walls. I'm going to be gentle because I don't want the mica flying onto other sections. So I'm going all up the wall of the mould. You can also use cotton buds that you put in your ears to clean out your ears. You can use eyebrow eyebrow no eyeshadow brushes i just like using these brushes personally um i'll just show you quickly me using a different size brush just so you get an idea of what I mean. So I'm going to use this one here. If it's a really small brush, I'm not going to be able to collect much mica on it, but it is going to go everywhere still. So let me just do that away from the mould. These brushes that I'm using are actually 
nail design brushes for if you were doing nail design on your nails. I used to be completely addicted to doing my nails. I used to put um, gel nail on, and you know, UV nail varnish and stuff, and do all sorts of lovely designs. Well, I thought they were lovely. Um, it wasn't professional at all. It was all just home stuff, home learn. And then the next day, I'd be so addicted to doing it, I'd want to do it again. So I'd take it all off and start all over again really unhealthy for my nails and then about four years ago I got into resin and I don't think I've done my nails since so obviously I just needed an outlet and um, resin has stopped me ruining my nails so anyway yeah I'll carry on and do this you don't want to listen to me gossip or watch me do all of this um, and I will come back to you when I'm ready to move on to the reds okay so now I've done where the gold is that I want the gold to be and I've just wet my little brush and I'm just gonna um, give certain areas a bit of a clean up so I'm wetting the brush and then if I can grab one of my little wet wipes which doesn't want to come out of the little tub anyway, um, I can just keep wiping that keep getting it away or I can if it's a bigger area like this then I can just get in and rub off the area that I didn't like um there wasn't really anywhere that I made too much of a mess so I'm kind of happy that was the only spot really that I didn't that I didn't like so that's the gold so then we just literally repeat the same process but this time with the reds so I'm going to start off with the big red and without, oh actually sorry, before I do that I'm just going to pop the eyes in. So with the eyes I put gold all the way around and then I'm going to use this grass green for the very very centre, the pupil. So let me just do that very quickly. then I don't want a lot because, um, well, I don't. <laughs> and it doesn't matter now if I go over the gold because um, it's the first layer that you put down that's going to be the most prominent. You'll see in a minute that I put the big red down and then I back layer it with a deeper red. Okay, so there's the eyes. So that's the eyes done. Okay, so back to using the bigger brush and the big red. Now then, I can't remember. I think I used this one for the kind of um, wings and fleshy area. So let's just do that. So for these bits here, and these bits here, and here, and here marking my territory <laughs> and there they're going to be this colour so 
So have I done all of those bits? Oh, there's one bit there, let's put that in there. Okay, so I've put my sort of wing area and my fleshy area. So now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go back over the big red with this claret. And then that's what gives it that really deep, deep color in this one that I made earlier. You see, that's a slightly different colour to that because that one's got the big red and this claret, I hope. Okay, so it's been a couple of days. I've let this cure completely and we were going to demold and see whether or not we have got a good enough dragon to go along with the other dragon. Oh, looking good. There we go. I need to tidy up that edge there because it's overfilled the mould. So it's not quite the same red. As you can see, that one, I think, do you remember I had two bags that were similar colours and I was like, oh, I don't know which one I've used. I think I got them around the wrong way. I think that colour was meant to be there and that colour was meant to be there, maybe, because that's a slightly different colour to there. So that's what I think. But actually, I don't mind that they're two slightly different coloured um, dragons. It just proves that you can't really replicate these things and that every single one is unique. So I'll tidy up the little webbing areas. So it's all come out really nicely. All the spikes are there. I don't know if you noticed when I was pouring, I was pouring really, really, really slowly. And I was really trying to fill all the little grooves. And that was why I was pouring so slowly. I have missed a bit of gold there, but hopefully no one will notice. So there we have two lovely dragons, all made from painting the mold first with the micas. I hope you've enjoyed watching.